Hi, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and I'm excited to present a Patreon training from one year ago. This is going to be split up into a two part series on what you need to know about air filters. Part one is going to cover code, types of filters, and how they work, and of course, airflow resistance. Without further ado, here's when it comes to the 2021 mechanical code. In the 2021 IMC in section 605, the general code reads that heating and air conditioning systems shall be provided with an approved air filter. Those filters shall be installed such that all return air, outdoor air and makeup air is filtered upstream of any heat exchanger or coil. Filters shall be installed in an approved convenient location. Also, regarding approval of filters in section 605, media type and electrostatic type filters shall be listed and labeled. If they're media type, they need to meet UL 900. High efficiency filters need to meet UL 586 and electrostatic filters need to meet UL 867. Now this training is not gonna talk about the testing and requirements from underwriter laboratories. If you want some details on that, it's really easy to Google and find it. So let me talk about the first option, which is usually shipped with most air handlers and furnaces. It's just a panel filter. Typically these filters are made out of fiberglass, maybe some MERV one or two media. They have very little pleats they usually come in a cardboard frame or they're washable media. And they're really there to pick up things like lint or fibers or maybe some large particles, stuff you don't want getting in the coil. Usually the range, the minimum efficiency rating value of these filters are somewhere in the one to four range, MER4. And it's a typical 0.1 inch of pressure drop. This is probably the least pressure drop when it comes to an air filter and it takes out the biggest, meaning the largest micron contaminants. The next option is really what we call an extended surface filter. This is what we would in the industry call a high efficiency or uh, a large pleated filter, right? It's usually made up of media and they range uh, in the MERV 5 to MERV 8 range typically. The picture here shows the old style air bears that are available. There are a lot of other options like this but the more pleats and the thicker the filter, meaning the depth of the filter, the longer that filter can last in the system and the more it can hold, right? There are also under extended surface filters, things called rigid box filters. Those are made typically by OEM manufacturers. They fit the furnace or air handler that's coming and they might have a slightly higher efficiency value, typically MERV nine to 12. And those rigid box filters tend to have a higher pressure drop. And you wanna make sure that the duct system that you are installing this furnace or air handler into can actually handle it, right? You have to design around these air filters. You can't just take a one inch panel filter like we were talking about in the last uh, section and put in a MERV 12 air filter and call it a day. It's obviously gonna impact airflow, right? And the typical pressure drop for a pleated or rigid box filter ranges from 0.15 to as high as 0.30. Obviously we're seeing now that if you have a fan that can't overcome this, or you have an ECM motor, it's gonna ramp up and use more energy in order to pull the air through a filter that has higher pressure drop. Of course, the next option, which doesn't have quite as much pressure drop, is the electronic air cleaner. These are known as electrostatic. They ionize the air, stream particles. It's really important that electrostatic air filters actually now in order to meet code, do not add ozone to the air. That's what that UL listing is for. If you have a system that you have existing electronic air cleaners, you probably want to replace this. I personally have taken a lot of these styles out. And if I don't replace the cabinet or I don't upgrade the filter, they actually make media filters that will slide right in there that are MERV 10 to 12. So you have some options here. Basically these, when you ionize that airstream, it's really there to put a positive charge into the allergens or smoke and it sticks to the metal that's within the EAC, right? These typically have a lower pressure drop. If you take this out of the frame and you look at it, you can almost see right through it. We're relying on ionizing the airstream instead of running it through, you know, like the filter. So moving up here, when we get to rigid cell or cartridge filters, 
These I've seen out there is possibly the cells that you look at inside a AccuClean that say that American Standard makes. There's a lot of versions. I don't want to stick to one brand. They typically have some sort of pre-filter and then the rigid cell or cartridge filter that goes after it. They tend to have a really high efficiency on filtering things out and these tend to fall into the MERV 13 to 16 range. We're talking about using them in surgical rooms, commercial applications. They do a really good job removing smoke and odors. They tend to have a slightly higher pressure drop than normal electrostatic air cleaners. Uh, they're typical 0.2 to 0.3. And these definitely have to be designed around. If you don't, just putting this into a duct system will likely change the volume of air and impact comfort in the rest of the house. But the air is gonna be a lot cleaner and if your duct system can handle it, this is a great option, probably one of the best options when it comes to air filters in an HVAC system. And then of course the highest efficiency filter would be the high efficiency particulate air filters or HEPA filters. These have a minimum of 99.97 efficiency in order to meet the UL listing. They are also used to remove smoke in hospitals, commercial applications. They have a MERV rating higher than 16. It's 16 and above. But with HEPA filters, the typical pressure drop can be 0.8 all the way up to one inch. And they're not usually used in residential HVAC applications because of this, unless they're standalone. So as I've been talking here, I've been letting you know what the typical pressure drop is based on what we're filtering out of the air. And this is a great chart out of the Hardig Cooley catalog and also under the Coke Filter Corporation. You can see uh, the blue line on these charts. There's a blue solid line and a blue dotted line. And that's the difference between a standard capacity and a one inch high capacity filter. So a high capacity filter tends to have deeper pleats and it actually has a lower pressure drop. So you can see as the flow rate goes up with the that same air filter, the pressure drop actually goes up with it. Of course, the pressure drop is lower if you have a deeper pleat. So as we go up to a two inch, you can see that both of those lines drop down when it comes to pressure drop. As an example, you might have a 0.15 pressure drop with a standard capacity two inch filter, but a two inch high capacity filter might have a pressure drop of less than 0.1 when you hit that 1200 CFM. And then of course, once you get to the four inch standard and high capacity filters, uh, you can see that those differences start to really get closer. So the bigger spread is with the less deep pleats, the deeper the pleat, the closer that pressure drop gets when you're relating it from standard to high capacity filters. Pressure drop is what we refer to with filters as resistance to airflow. Now let's talk about the efficiency of the filter or removing particulates. In ASHRAE 52.2, one of the most recent 2012, this chart actually explains how small the particulate can be in order for that range to be filtered out. Now in ASHRAE 62.2, there's a great code in here that says any outdoor air has to be filtered at MERV 8 or above. And when you're installing an air filter, you have to ex meet or exceed local code. So as an example here, you won't be able to use an E3 level filter, that's MERV 1 through 4. You would have to use a MERV 8 filter to hit the particulates that need to be removed in order to meet the re required code of E2 group. Just to give you an idea, when we talk about the size or the micrometer, one micrometer actually equals one 25,400th of an inch. Very, very small. So when you get below one micrometer, you can imagine how tiny that particle is and how efficient that filter needs to be in order to remove it from the airstream. Here's a great chart to show you where you should use filters based on the MERV rating and the MERV standard 52.2. You can see they break them up into groups. Really MERV one through four is great for getting the minimum protection for equipment in a home. They're residential or minimum light commercial, removing basic stuff like lint and large particles, pet hair, stuff like that, that we don't want in the A-coil 
or the furnace secondary heat exchanger, right? Once we move up to MERV 5 through 8, that's where we can see pleated filters or extended surface filters, and we start to remove some allergens, maybe a little bit of smoke. MERVs 9 through 12 is probably the best you can put into a residential application without causing significant pressure drop. And these are always those pocket filters or rigid box or rigid cell filters. You might be able to get a media filter. Those tend to be uh, color coded more like uh, yellow when it comes to MERV 12 or 11. And then of course MERV 13 through 16, those pressure drops are much, much higher. We tend to not use those in residential applications. Those are great for you know general surgery, hospitals, healthcare, uh, commercial buildings where you need smoke removal. They tend to be standalone or on a commercial rooftop or a large industrial piece of equipment that can handle up to one inch pressure drop when it comes to filtration. Now, so what did you think about part one of what you need to know about air filters? Please be sure to come back and join me for part two next week where we cover particulate removal and holding, design considerations, and of course, resolving existing issues with air filters. Be sure to subscribe to my page if you haven't, so that way you don't miss any update moving forward. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.